1996. 1996. Stephen Pearl was seven. Mike Burgermaster was two. Chad Pruitt was in his second year of coaching high school basketball. Ira Bowman was a player at Penn. Bill Clinton was president. Monica was still his intern. Um, <laughs> um, Gas was a dollar twenty-two, and that was the last time that we beat Florida at Florida. That's a long, long time ago. Um, it tells you a little bit about the history uh, of, of, of Florida basketball, right? It's as much a compliment to Florida basketball uh, as it is anything, really. I mean, uh, I've not been able to go down there and beat them at Auburn. Um, and, um, and so it's a monumental task. Um, I have thought, and I still think, that Florida is a sleeper. Um, I said it pretty early on, um, not just because Todd Golden was my f my dear friend and former assistant, but, and I think they know it too. They've already played Kentucky twice. They've already been to Tennessee. Um, and we only got a two-game lead on them right now, and obviously if we only play them once. It's that their place this year. Um, they're in it, you know. Um, this will be, like I had said about Alabama, and I, I don't know where, where Todd has, where, what he's talked about publicly yet, but like I said about Alabama, that, that was the biggest game of the regular season for us we've had in a while. We had to get that one, otherwise Alabama gets a two-game lead on us and we, we don't think we have any chance to catch them. I thought we played with that urgency. Uh, I think Florida will do the same. I think they'll do the same on Saturday. Our math is so good. Um... And the win could mean so much to get them in a, a way better position be, as far as being in the tournament is concerned. Um, and uh, I think, you know, they're good enough. Uh, they got great guards that can really score it older. Um, they got a huge athletic front line. Uh, they're the number two offensive rebounding team in the nation. And if you take their home offensive numbers, they're the seventh best offense in the country if it's just at home. So, um, and yet I think we can go down there, and I think we, we, we will, we have a chance. Um, I guess the only thing else that I'd say about, you know, where we are right now is obviously ha coming off the heels of a second half against Ole Miss and two halves against Alabama. But you're probably the three best halves we've played all year. I'm going to go back and remind our guys about what we were like you know, at Alabama or at Mississippi State or even at Ole Miss in the first half, which weren't very good. The body of our work against the best, uh, you know, on the road is still not very good. It's, and it's not good enough to beat Florida unless we really step up. Florida has had an advantage. They've been out all week, which is really interesting. I like the bye. We get one in about a week. But, boy, a Wednesday night game and then travel Friday – and then play them Saturday when they haven't played since last Saturday. It's, that's that's quite an advantage. And um, so, anyways, questions? Bruce, I was going to ask you about just some of those recent games in Gainesville recently and the Mustafa team and Samir and Jabari. Is there anything specific about going down there, or is it just is every game sort of been its own struggle and its own animal? Yeah, I think every game's been its own challenge. I think our first few years we weren't good enough. Um, believe it or not, Billy Donovan was still coaching my, you know, down there. Um, and then we've gone down there a couple times with good enough teams to beat them and haven't been able to. Um, and uh, and again, part of it is you know. I don't know that we've – it'd be hard to check back, but I'm not sure we'd never – lost. We, that when we went down there, it wasn't an NCAA tournament team we still lost to. In other words, I don't think we ever lost to a really bad Florida team down there. Right? That's another interesting one for Marlene. She's on a, she's on a, on a ride to Gainesville, so we'll call her and tell her to get on that research. 
Bruce, you mentioned it Wednesday night, but Florida's number two team in the country in offensive rebounds. And I know that's been a big key for you guys on the road, especially, and, and having that travel. How do you think the guys have kind of stepped up to that in the last couple of, especially since the Alabama Mississippi State losses? Yeah, yeah. You've done really well on the boards. Well, it's been a it's been a focus. You know, the, the film is tough to watch when you when we have those breakdowns. It, it it doesn't give us, you know, universal. Look, there's a reason why they are. They've got they play two seven footers and and uh, they they're really 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 long. That's the one thing when we walk out there, you know, they're going to be bigger and taller and longer at almost every position. Baker Mazzara, Chad will probably be longer than than they are. He's longer than almost everybody. Um, but I think the rest of the guys will be our front line. Every, every, uh, everybody on our front line will be, they'll be longer. Um, and, uh, and are clearly our ones and twos. So, um, yeah, we recognize what they do. They, they run good. They're really good offensively. They run really good stuff. Um, their open corner stuff is really good and hard to guard. And, um, and they play with great confidence at home. They shoot the ball from three extremely well they play really fast they play really fast and so we got to get back in transition and and uh, see if we can get all five guys back and have a chance just as we kind of get into this now more i guess longer stretch of of, of aiden struggling with 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 his a uh, three-point shot you've obviously had several guards like him that just you know shoot a lot of threes slumps happen like they're they're really talented players how, how do you coach yeah. a freshman like that through yeah. a struggle like this so so I could probably, on one hand, count the number of bad shots Aiden's taken all season. Now, he's probably taken more shots than others would think maybe more than that. But I think it's going in every time he shoots it, even if they're bad shots. <laughs> that's how great a shooter he is. And that's how hard he works at his shooting. Um, and so uh, he, knows that he, he knows that we and he had that confidence in him. And I still want him to, you know, be able to do it. And he's worked so hard at the other aspects of the game where he was behind coming in as a freshman. He's worked so hard to become better defensively and to check out his position and to get our, get our guys into their offense. Um, and he's taken on that responsibility. Look at his assist turnover ratio. Um, and so I'm, he'll make shots. Bruce, obviously, you know, Castleton over the past, you know, couple years was a really consistent big guy for them. Now they've got Samuel, and I know Han Logden was a guy that you you were, you know, interested in, in the portal. What did you like about him in the offseason, and what do you like about what their front court's doing right now and how Jalen and Janai are going to match up against them? Yeah, they're, I mean, um, you know, Samuel is one of the most athletic bigs in our league. Again, veteran, older. Um, all their seven-footers are, are athletic, run the floor, Block shots, um, our our inside outside guys. They're not doing as much on the perimeter of those bigs as I think they thought they would. I think they thought almost all those bigs were going to be real pick and pop ready guys. They're pick and pop guys now, but they haven't put up those numbers yet. But I think they can. They will. Um, I think I think their big young guys are all really good prospects, really good prospects. But they're still they're still a little younger uh, as as freshmen or sophomores or things like that. Samuel's right. He's ready. And he is, you know, he's obviously bouncy. And they block shots and they, they, they tip dunk and they, 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 they run to the rim and rebound a lot of the misses that three or four outstanding guards shoot. In a lot of ways, they remind me of Alabama uh, in their guards, but, but they've just got a little longer front line and, and uh, there's some similarities there. You and Todd obviously have a, a long, great relationship. Just talk about how that plays into pros and cons as you uh, prepare for each other. It, it, it is, it's a great question. It has nothing to do with preparation, nothing. Uh, it just doesn't. Um, I'm no more familiar with, with how he's, what he's doing than, than, than anybody else. It's, it's a new year. It's a new personnel. What they're doing now, they did some of last year. It, 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 so, therefore, the preparation is no different. The emotion – um, is probably a little different, uh, you know, five minutes before the game and a few minutes after the game, and that, that, that's it. I want him to do well. I want, I want Florida basketball to do well. Um, and I want to beat the pants off him on Saturday. And I mean both. But um, 
it, it, it really has nothing to do with the preparation at all. Trey, uh, since he's gotten back in the starting lineup, that, that assist to turnover ratio has you know, got done really well. He scored a lot early on. Just how pleased have you been with him kind of taking on a, a, that charge, especially especially early in games? Well, I mean, I think you got to take what the defense gives you. That's that's what that's what good guards do. That's what good players do. And so, um, interestingly, against a, a Trey, Alabama was sort of in a drop coverage, uh, not impacting him which is not as much about respecting him as that's just how they chose to guard him. Sometimes you change it up. But with, with Aiden, they, they hit him every time. They, they blitzed him every time. They, they impacted him, which means that they didn't want to leave him a chance to shoot the ball. And so um, you got to take what the defense gives you. Um, Alabama dropped. Trey got into the lane and, and used his pull-up game and got to the rim and used his athleticism and, and um, you know, uh, it was fun to see Trey play with that with that kind of confidence. I think the other thing was the focus on the defensive end. Let's uh, let's not forget Alabama scored for like I think the first four or five possessions that they played against ahead, and 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 you know that puts a lot of pressure on your offense. Well, our offense was able to handle it here at home uh, to the tune of 55 points against Alabama in the first half. That's not happening in games for Florida. It's not. So as a result, our defense better keep us in the game um, if we have any chance to go down there and make history. A couple more. You mentioned Todd a bit. I guess uh, now that he's in his second season in, in the SEC, I guess how have you seen him kind of develop as a head coach from, from when you had him on your staff to, to where he is now? Well, he, like, and I mentioned this I mentioned this yesterday, our, our staff's doing a terrific job. Um the scouts have been uh, have been great. Um, the player development piece, led by Ira Bowman, has been great. Um, you know the scouting, um, you know between Stephen and 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 Chad and and Mike. Um, you know obviously Ira, uh, Corey, Maddox, Ian. They've done a nice job. Um, and uh, so. The reason why I answered the question that way is, you know, I remember Todd. He 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 had a, a really good offensive mind, a great analytical mind, um, and and he was a really good player. I mean, he played point guard at St. Mary's, you know, for one of the best coaches in the country. Um, he then coached at Columbia, and uh, at San Francisco as an assistant, but a coach at Washington State right now, who's recognized as one of the better coaches out in the West Coast, and you know he. He, he's had great preparation, I think, and he's really so. Look, he's a smart kid, um, and uh, he's one of the best young coaches in the country.